In this video, we're going to be talking about the Rep AB5100. We'll talk about the build process, how easy or how quick it is to build it. I'll show a time lapse of that and give a final uh, time stamp of how long it took to build it. We'll talk about the build quality. We'll talk about the features of the bench. We'll talk about uh, my experience with the bench. You'll notice that I'm already sitting on a Rep AB5100, so we'll talk about that later in the video. And then we'll finally talk about the price and if I recommend you to get a Rep AB5100. Let's go. So I've got this one put together. It took me almost exactly an hour on the dot. Uh, it wouldn't have taken near that long, but I was actually being very careful about what I did with the packaging. I wanted to lay it out in a very specific way because I'm actually sending this bench back and I wanted to know how to be able to package it back up easily without having to take forever. So that's one thing that did take me longer when putting this together. And I also dropped a bolt that went inside uh, the frame of the bench, so I took 20 minutes, 10, 20 minutes, probably getting that one uh, pulled out. So it probably would have taken about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes to get the bench put together. It was really very simple, very straightforward. We'll talk more about why that bench is going back later in the video, but for now, we're gonna get a workout in, and then I'll be back tomorrow with the rest of the review. Now, getting into the specifics of the bench, this bench is made with 11 gauge steel. It's a very big, beefy, quality bench it's probably bigger and heavier than a lot of the benches that you're probably used to using at your commercial gym so you this bench is going to take whatever you throw at it it is very very beefy and robust now that said one potential drawback is this thing is a very heavy bench now depending on how much you're moving it around that may or may not be a negative for you personally now for me it's not necessarily a huge deal because the bench is typically sitting somewhere in this area or i may roll it over there to the door so that i can do resistance band stuff uh, but for the most part this doesn't move very much but if you're rolling it around if you have a large garage gym or you're rolling it out into the driveway to do stuff like that it might be something to consider. Um, I'm not 100% sure how much this weighs. I feel like I saw somewhere on the shipping information that it weighs 100 pounds, but don't quote me on that. But either way, the point remains, it is a heavy bench. The back pad has seven different adjustments. It goes from flat up to 90 in 15 degree increments. And then the butt pad goes from 45 degrees to negative 15 degrees. Uh, in 15 degree increments which brings me to the fact that this is a full FID bench so you can do decline work on this you will have to get a separate attachment to do that there's a leg attachment that will attach up here at the top of the bench that is $89 separately so once you attach the little uh, leg holder up here then you'll lay backwards on the bench this way and you can do your decline work I don't have that personally right now but I do plan to get that at some point in the future this bench is a pop pin style adjustment so you pull the pin out put it to your desired location let the pin go to lock into the little hole and it has a stainless steel wear guard that has laser cut numbers on it so that you'll know the angle that you have the bench at which is a pretty nifty little feature that also looks pretty cool now i know that one thing that some people are particular about when it comes to adjustable benches is the gap between the butt pad and the back pad and this one has a four inch gap in the completely flat position and i've seen some people online complain about having a four inch gap to me personally I, I don't find it to be a problem it doesn't bother me whatsoever so actually i kind of like having a little bit of a gap between the butt pad and the back pad in the flat position because when i'm going to do a dumbbell bench i actually will place my butt right at the front of where the gap starts and then when i lay back it kind of helps me center myself so i mean to me personally it doesn't matter but if that is something that does bother you 
just be advised that this has a four inch gap between the butt pad and the back pad. And there is another bench that Rep makes, the AB5000 uh, Zero Gap. And it's very similar to this bench. It uses the same leg attachment at the top. It looks very similar to this. It's built very similar. Um, but the one difference there is the butt pad actually is on a slider. So no matter what position you have the back pad adjusted to, you can actually slide the seat back and forth so that there's zero gap. But to me, it's not necessarily worth the price tag. That bench costs $100 more than this one. And like I said, to me, the gap doesn't really bother me. So I went with the 5100 over the 5000. The back pad is 17.5 inches off the ground and the width of the back pad is 12 inches. And the last feature on this bench that I think is pretty cool is there are wheel guards on the back so that if you have a spotter spotting you and they accidentally step on the wheels, they're not gonna slip and fall down they'll be able to stand on those little wheel guards. Now, another note that I wanna point out here is the quality control. The first bench that I was sitting on in the beginning of the video, the frame was a little bit warped. So if you were looking at it from the butt towards the head, it kind of twisted downhill to the right. And then if it was in the upright 90 degree position, the bench was shifted. So the back pad was leaning just a tiny bit. So I did contact them. The customer support was really friendly. I sent pictures to show what I was talking about and they sent the new one out right away. So, I mean, the customer support was really easy to work with, but it was a little bit annoying having to send the original back, you know, disassemble it, package it back up, send it out, build up another bench. So that was kind of annoying, but like I said, the customer support was really nice, really friendly. So that wasn't the end of the world there. Now, as far as my experience with this bench, I've been using it for a couple weeks now and there's really not a whole lot to say. Like I said in the beginning, this bench is, it's large, it's heavy, it's overbuilt. There's nothing that you're gonna throw at this bench that it's not gonna be able to take. It has a 1100 pound weight capacity, I think. So if you need a bigger bench than this, then I applaud you, my friend. This bench costs $399 and I do believe it is worth the price. Now, benches is one of those places where you kind of get what you pay for. If you get a cheap bench, it's gonna be wobbly, a little bit shackledy probably. It's gonna be light and flimsy. So I love this bench. They do have a alternative to this one that's a little bit cheaper, the AB3000 and the AB3100. Those are 250. Uh, the 3100 does not decline. So if that's something that you care about, keep that in mind. It's 189 bucks though. So you're saving quite a bit of money. The AB3000 does decline. So if you wanted a cheaper alternative that is a full FID bench, then the 3000 will be the one to go with and it is 249, so you're saving 150 bucks. But personally, if you have the cash, I like this one a lot. I would recommend you check it out. Now, if you're interested, I actually made a video about this entire setup. So if you wanna see what all I have going on here, then check out that video. I'll put it up in the cards and down in the description. And make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button if you are interested in more home gym training topics because the next few videos, I'm gonna be doing a full review on the Iron Master dumbbells. I'm gonna be doing a budget garage gym build out as well as a more elaborate garage gym build out. So make sure to check those videos out when they come around. Make sure you have those notifications turned on. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hate it, give it a thumbs down. If you want more content just like this, consider subscribing, or you can check out one of the videos that will be up on the screen. You can also check us out on the Treadaway Training blogcast. We're there every Sunday at 3 p.m. That's treadawaytraining.com slash blog. As always, God bless you and your family, and we'll see you tomorrow. Wash your hands.